Hey, yeah, 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 come on, come a little closer. It's flawless time, baby. What's up, guys? It's Roger, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're playing some more Trials of Osiris, which, of course, this weekend we have the rotating maps of Midtown, Wormhaven, and Altar of Flame, three maps that are fine to me. And with this build, I think we are slaying out those maps pretty darn well. First of all, armor is going to be pretty simple as usual, putting a lot of focus on my Igneous Hammer, which of course is coming back next season. So I thought, why not go ahead and pull it out? Because it feels great. One of my favorite guns in the entire game, especially in PvP. So you can see a lot of solar targeting, unflinching, and a reload mod for that because 120s tend to reload pretty slowly. You can see I like making ores of power with my build. I do that with Firepower, Heavy Handed, and a Reaper mod. Again, you can always pause if you want to read these uh, mods more in depth. When I pick up those ores of power, I get ability regeneration back through my Absolution, my Innervation, and my Orbs of Restoration. And the last thing to help us get our grenades back is using these two bomber mods. So whenever we put our rift down, we get around 20 to 25% of our grenade energy back. Now for our exotic, we are going to be running Astrocyte first, which of course is going to be buffed in a few days when the new season starts. Pretty hyped for that, excited to see what kind of fun stuff we can kind of pull off with it, especially with guns that have like Repulsor Brace on them. It's going to be a fun little combo there. So we're using that today and just slaying our enemies out as usual. Like I said before, Igneous Hammer is going to be our our primary weapon. You can see this is a 120 RPM hand cannon, one of the best in the entire game. Feels great. This is quite an old one that I have here, not even an actual origin trait on it, but it doesn't really matter. Of course, it has quick draw on it, so I can pull it out really fast. My other gun has quick draw on it too. I love double quick draw loadouts. They just feel so good and uh, crispy, especially with elemental capacitor on this thing, which is going to give me a big boost in my stability because I'm on the Void Warlock here. For our primary, we are running the Fractus Shotgun. Of course, it has quick draw and opening shot on it, so this thing has great range on it, and it is a precision frame, so it maps enemies quite well. As long as someone isn't running at you with a uh, Juggernaut Shield or Antius, which is only about 95% of the enemies that run at you with shotguns, then you'll probably be able to kill them. Let's take a peek at our Void 3.0 here. You can see we have on a Nova Bomb Vortex. We have a Healing Rift. We have Blink On. If you want to be a little floaty boy, you can, but that's kind of a waste of time, but you can be an absolute Blink Master. And if you want to become a Blink Master yourself from the gameplay you see today, maybe it just entices your little brain a little bit, then go ahead to the end screen of this video. You can find my playlist called the Full Blink Journey Playlist, which will teach you everything you need to know to become a Blink Master yourself. Now, after that, we have Pocket Singularity. Now, we have so many good choices down here when it comes to our melees. Overall, I think we're just going to go with the nice Pocket Singularity here. Now, I have Scattered Nades on because they are one of the only nades in the game that can very reliably and quickly one-shot your enemies. There's things like void walls, you know, in spikes that will one-shot your enemies, but they have tick damage, right? These are just one big boom, you know, a bunch of little scatters comes out and it's and they tick your enemy down as if 16 malaria infested mosquitoes are just biting their butt cheeks. So we like to see that it can take out enemies pretty quickly. And when it does get a kill, it's actually going to proc our devour. So feed the void here. Of course, it's going to proc our devour. That is going to heal us fully and also give us some extra grenade energy back. So we love to see that. Over here, we have Child of the Old Gods, or as we call him on my channel, Clarence. Clarence is my son from the void. When he goes out, he's going to suck absolute cheeks, toes, and any other extremities that you have hanging off of your body. Clarence is going to get some little suckage on him. Now, when he does suck, he's going to give you some grenade and melee energy back. If he gets a kill, he's going to proc your devour. And on top of that, if you kill somebody who's sucked by Clarence, then you do get some class ability energy back, so we love to see that. Down here on our fragments is some fun stuff. My favorite fragment in the entire game, Echo of Dilation. Void fragment right here says, while crowds, you sneak faster and gain enhanced radar resolution. This very much so in tune radar is going to let you know exactly where your enemies are so you know when to aggress upon them and how to aggress upon them. Over here we have Echo of Persistence. This is going to make the initial proc of your devour go from 10 seconds to 15 seconds and any subsequent procs are going to be longer as well. Over here you can see we have Echo of Expulsion which makes your void ability final blows cause targets to explode. Just a secondary explosion there so if enemies are holding hands like they do when their mommy is taken through the mall to get some new clothes for back to school day, well you can blow them up pretty easily and do some good extra damage. And last but not least we have Echo of Vigilance. This says that when you defeat a target while your shields are depleted then you get a full void over shield which we can then use that Void Over Shield in conjunction with our Devour to full heal, or we can just use it by itself to go ahead and aggress upon our next enemy, or use it as a good amount of buffer health so we can get ourselves out of tricky engagements. Somebody requested that I show them the drip on my last Hunter build video, so you know, I was like, alright, I should show my drip more often in case people want to see it, so here's the drip that I'm running today in case you're interested. Pretty simple build here, I do get a solo flawless, it took me a bit, I went over until Saturday and today and I had a good card and just had a nice little flawless at the end, so I was happy I was able to get that today. It seemed like a lot of the tryhards and losers kind of logged off today and I had some actual good matches, so that was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed at any point, you want to leave me a like or subscribe, I'd very much appreciate that. If you want to go that one step further, enjoy my puffer people or my low puffs, those are my channel membership tiers for 99 cents and 4.99 then go ahead and click that join button below this video and you can check out all the perks that come with that but all that being said i think we're ready to go ahead and get into this gameplay so without further ado let's go ahead and blink on into it 
Okay, let me just go through my notes here. Looks like it says, I'm supposed to complain about PvP and how bad the game is for this video. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, I did that yesterday. Today, we're actually going to talk about Blink and some fun parts about it and how you should be using it to be effective with it. I haven't done that in a while, so I figured maybe we'll actually focus on our Blink a little bit here because there might be some new people coming in who want to try the buffed Astrocyte verse and get into Blink themselves. So if that's you, then welcome to the world of Blink. Uh, be prepared to actually have to use some skill and learn how to be good with something. That right there is called a blink pop-up slam, by the way. Pretty fun technique. And you can learn a bunch of stuff like that if you actually just put in the time. And when you do, you will see the rewards come to you quite a bit. <laughs> now, let's get into this. You can see, and this build is pretty simple. I'm using scatter nades for things like that. At the beginning of rounds, if I want to do a little bit of damage, it shows me where my enemies are. And then my teammate like this went in, got a good hang up right there, put those little scarecrows up in the middle of his fucking garden. I went back in, plastered their bushies with my bullets and absolutely smack them around. Gotta pick up the orbs and the voidoses as I call them, but you can call them void breaches if you want to, but I, I think they look like voidoses. So that's what I call them. That's gonna give you a bunch of ability energy back. The voidoses especially are going to just give you uh, ability energy energy for your class ability, which is your rift, of course. You can see right there, if you wanted to rewind, we got our entire nade energy back and our full nade is back to us because we used a rift. So our bomber mods both went off and that's why I love to use that mod. Now, this is a good round of how not to use your blink. You're going to see this guy is crutching his Leymon. Disgusting, I know. But that's not the only thing we're going to see here from a stinky little point of view for these players. You're going to see they're actually no skill in a lot of different ways. We have one sitting in the circle. We have one that just is about to get smacked right here. Boom, he's down and out. The next one's going to blink on top of me. That blink was very, very bad. He should know, for one, that I have a shotgun. And for two, he should know that the angle of the blink he took on me was just way too steep. I think a big part, and I said this before, but I'll say it a thousand times again, of why people think Blink is so bad is because they see players like that, and uh, if you're the player that's, if you're watching this video or whatever, <laughs> somebody tells you you're in it, I don't mean to uh, destroy you or whatever, but in case you want to know what's wrong, by the way, I knew this guy was going to peek me because I could see his bow sticking out from behind the wall, as you can see. Not the greatest with his Blink again, he made a mistake right there of trying to use his Blink in terms of a reaction instead of proactively and we'll get to that soon but let's talk about that first blink that he did very aggressively on me you can't take those extremely steep angles and just fall on someone's head if you're going to push somebody like that it needs to be a very very last minute kind of blink that you just have to do because you have no other choice but if you had the time like he did to push me with his blink as effectively as possible then he should have tried to make more of a horizontal blink you can control your blinks and how they're going to be horizontally or vertically depending on when you press press your blink button after you have done your jump. There's a big reason that I don't recommend you run 100 mobility, and my opinions on that have changed a little bit through time, but the biggest reason is that the higher mobility you have, and yes, I have tested this, you actually have a higher jump. That means it's going to take you longer to reach the apex of your jump. The apex of your jump is the point of your jump in which you are going to be coming down from the upward motion of your jump. And as soon as you start coming down from your jump, about a millisecond into you coming down from a jump, that's when you want to press your blink button if you want a fully horizontal, or as I call it, a forward blink. So if you have a higher mobility, it's going to take you longer to actually reach that apex. Now, I will say, this comes down to mere frames, so it's really not that big of a deal, and at this point in time, especially after playing a lot more on Hunter Blink, which I have a lot of videos on that too, and build videos for Hunter Blink if you are interested in those as well, including the one that I posted yesterday, which you can go watch next if you're interested more so in the Hunter Blink instead of the Warlock Blink, but of course people want to run 100 Mobile, um, I got a tongue tatter now, but people run, want to run 100 mobility on their hunters because it is the class stat. It's going to give you the fastest uh, ability energy regen for your dodge. So people want to run that and it's completely okay if you want to run 100 mobile, you can, but there are some reasons why you don't want to specifically for blink. <laughs> you can see in this round here, I was using my blink to get a good flank on the enemies. I was also using it in conjunction with my Echo of Dilation radar, which you can kind of see I was doing right there. So as we said in the intro, Echo of Dilation is going to give you the much more in-tune radar every time you crouch. But it's not just crouching, it's sliding. One of the biggest combos I like to do is when I go into a blink, as soon as I come out of it, if I know I'm going to be in a high combat area, or there's going to be enemies around the corner from me, I'm doing what I do right now, where I'm crouching to check my in-tuned radar. You see how the enemy's radar ping gets smaller? I also see one to my left, so I know he's there. 
But what I was saying before is specifically when you come out of a blink, if you know there's enemies in front of you, what you can do is slide. While you go through a slide, you couldn't really tell right there because that guy was on top of me on the radar. <laughs> but when you go through a slide, it's also going to proc your echo of dilation. So I urge you as you go through a slide, if you know the enemies are not too close to you and you have the time to look at your radar, to look at your radar while you slide. This will count as proccing your echo of dilation and you can get the extra um, information as you go through that slide to know exactly where your enemies are and then you can go in with that information and take them out to best of your ability. That round is a good example of how I killed that guy at the end with my pocket singularity. Uh, if you can one-shot somebody with your shotgun, of course, that's very good. I oftentimes am having no problem if I happen to kill him with my pocket singularity, however, because what that's going to do is proc my devour. Devour is a great tool, especially for a solo player such as myself, and maybe you as well, to actually go in and run entire rounds by yourself, just like right here. So. I don't have my devour yet, right? I pushed that guy, he became volatile. Since I killed him while he was volatile, he dropped a void Ussie. That's going to give me about full energy back on my uh, rift, which you see right there. Killing the second guy with my nade actually got me my devour and my echo of vigilance since he broke my shields when he died to me. So that means I got full health and a full void overshield, which gave me the confidence that I could push in, grab the orb from my second enemy, and then go and drop down to pick up my teammate. After I did that, I felt confident to push back up and take a fight with the last guy to win the entire round. And that's the kind of stuff that a void lock kit can really enable you to do because it has self-healing, it has self-preservation uh, that you can use aggressively or defensively in terms of your void overshield from your echo of vigilance, and it has a bunch of stuff in your kit to get your utility back very, very quickly. Now, I want to loop back to something that I was talking about earlier, which was actually in terms of using your blink, it's not something you want to be using reactively. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see from people when they're using their blink, is that they think what it's for mainly is, oh look, this person's pushing me, they already hit me with a shotgun blast, <laughs> now I'm just going to blink up and I'm going to be fine. But you're not going to be fine. So there's kind of a problem with Blink. Well, there's a lot of problems with Blink and Bungie doesn't fix them, but we'll get to that in a different time. The point right now is that Blink doesn't exactly get rid of your hitbox. And when I say it doesn't exactly do it, I mean it, it doesn't at all. Your hitbox doesn't go anywhere. So your hitbox sort of stretches, but at the same time, it primarily stays exactly where you started your blink until the entire blink animation finishes. That is even worse right now because of how laggy the servers have been. Latency and lag are your worst enemy on a blink warlock. And also I gotta point out, if you're like the blink lock that I just shoved my entire fat cock into right there, uh, then please don't play blink lock because you're wasting it entirely. The entire match that guy was just sitting there with a lame on, holding down lanes, but he has astrocyte verse on. If you're gonna be playing blink lock, a big part of it is actually using your blink in one of two ways. Using it aggressively, like you've seen me doing in this video, to get on top of my enemies and around them in very unique ways to where they don't see it coming, just like I do right here. I blink to the side of them and above them a little bit. I came from such an unexpected angle that I was able to get to the side of them, use my clearance in conjunction with my shotgun, and take them both out. Pick up that orb for some extra ability regeneration, and you can see there, that's how you do the good blinks aggressively. You can also do it with something like a sniper build, and your blinks are more so for escape and flanking. But we can get into that in a different time, and I've covered that uh, quite you know, uh, far on my actual Blink Sniper builds. <laughs> if you're interested in hearing more about that and seeing how to play Blink Sniper, then just go to my video yeah, page on my channel. You could type in Sniper and find it easily there. Also, Eager Edge Sword is a Blink Warlock's best friend. Learn that now. Now, as we were saying before, though, you need to know that your Blink are much more proactive than reactive. If you're just going to be reacting to things as they come to you with your Blink, then you're going to be shit out of luck because it's not enough to simply have the reaction time with your blinks, with how much of a punishment it places on you for not using them proactively. And what do I mean when I say using them proactively? Oh, by the way, that Titan just threw himself off the map at the end of that last round, in case you're wondering why I cut it. Yeah, he just, I mean, he, he sent himself into the nether region, so adios to that guy. <laughs> but what I mean proactively is you need to actually know what you want to do with your blink before you use it. Right here, I knew I wanted to use my blinks to get a flink on this enemy and blink up on top of bridge and then push him with a slide and start shooting him with my primary weapon, and that's exactly what I did. Right here, I threw my scatternade, and unfortunately, just remember, scatternades take like a second before they actually leave your hand. It's really annoying, and I threw that one on the wall. It happens, so just remember if that happens to you. Not a big deal, but be 
be careful of that because you can easily blow your own bus up. Right here, I knew this guy was going to fly on top of me, so I said, okay, well, after playing my radar, I'm just going to wait for him, push him, and kill him with a nice three tap. I'm now going to use my blink to go aggress upon this guy. I saw he was in front of me here, so I blink up on the wall and bounce myself off the wall so I could start falling on his head. Now, that was a very aggressive push, and I was falling directly on top of him. There are times you can do that effectively, like right there. The biggest reason why I was okay pushing him like that is because it was a 3v1, and I knew both of my teammates were right behind me to follow up in case I couldn't quite get the kill. But at the very least, I knew I could get some good damage on him to hopefully finish him off from my teammates very easily. Here, I'm using my blinks proactively. I knew right when I killed the first guy, what was I doing? Look at my radar. So I looked at it, I saw where the next two enemies were, and I flinked around onto the bridge before they even knew I was there to take them out. The last guy is trying to push me here, so all I had to do was hold down aim with my hand cannon here, use a little head glitch, and snock him up. We take the second guy out, and the second here after I blink in, and bada bing bada boom, that's my super energy for us, if I can say so myself. So essentially, to put it in very layman's terms, using your blink proactively consists of one simple thing. And that is game sense, which is something that you can't learn overnight. It's something that you have to form over time. And that's completely fine if you don't have the best game sense in the world right now. Nobody just woke up and had the best game sense in the world one day. It's something that you do need to put in time and practice for, which is the same thing with blink. But I promise you, if you use your blink, you will actually have a better game sense than most players and you can develop it faster than most other players can so it kind of goes hand in hand you can become a very high skilled player by just using your blink and non-crutch weapons but uh, maybe you use some crutch weapons with your blink at first just because kind of like training wheels so you can hopefully have a little bit of a chance <laughs> because a uh, non-skilled blink player is probably going to get bussy bopped quite a bit especially if you go into a match like this which hey guess what it is it's me against five titans and you're like roger only three of those titans are on the enemy team. Have you ever seen the randoms that I get in my matches? I was fighting five titans. Now, that being said, people ask me a lot, can you use your blink effectively in high skilled PvP? Uh, I think every single weekend I go in and I prove that to you guys over and over, but there's always going to be those naysayers who don't quite understand it. But the answer is a very simple yes. You can use anything effectively in this game. It's all gonna come down to the amount of time you're willing to put in to practice that thing and be your best at it. But if you're willing to take the time out of your day and actually enhance your skill with that thing, then of course you can be good with it. It's just like around like this. I had to have the four sense to know that these enemies, two of them I believe it was, were crutching Antius. So I had my super and I wanted to use it, but if I threw it straight onto this guy, he could have Antius back at me. So I wanted to try to aim it either at a roof, a wall, or a floor. As long as it wasn't hitting him directly, then his Antius wasn't going to be good enough. He also started running away, so I knew it was a good time that I could easily pop my uh, Nova Bomb down, and it was a good thing to do because it ended up clapping us this last round, and we won the match off of it. You can see, wow, surprising, I have two Toxic Arc Titans who just want to relentlessly bag this guy. Uh, but to be honest, he was a disgusting little pig, so I, I popped an aquatic trap on him and put some hentai tentacles straight up his little bush. Now, if you guys have any questions about Blink, you can always feel free to leave those in the comment section, or I think, did I not say this in the intro? I don't know if I did or not, but I do have an entire Discord server called Blinkville Discord. Uh, you can go ahead and join that. It's going to be linked in the top right and in the description. I'd love to see it in there. I don't quite have as much, um, how do you say, enthusiasm for this game nowadays to really go much farther with it just because of how bad it's being handled at the moment but some days like today i actually had a good time when i got on you can see this is part of my flawless card right here oh and actually shout out to my teammates right here uh especially i need to see his name because i'm so bad at remembering names but we'll see it pop up in a second and i'll shout it out when i see it really cool dude there it is fubar draco awesome guy so i got on the match with these two guys um and after i clutch up this round here which you'll see was a pretty nice clutch up um, I should have clutched it up faster, to be honest. I had a few shots, and that was on me, but it was still a good clutch up for myself. Uh, he was like, yo, Roger, love the content. And I was like, actually, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Love to see you guys in my matches. I do have my uh, DMs on closed, just because if, you know, people really only use DMs to be worthless little skunk-smelling losers. So uh, if I'm ever with, like, my buddies that I play with sometimes, you can always DM them and be like, tell Roger I said I and I like the content or whatever, and they'll let me know that you said that, and I still appreciate it. Or you can go in team chat like they did here, and we were kind of talking back and forth, and they're really cool guys, so hey, shout out to Draco, really appreciate you guys. This is my fifth or sixth match to get my uh, to the lighthouse here, so I appreciate that I had some good teammates to help me uh, clap this up, and it was actually a pretty fun game, because guess what? It was just six warlocks, so it was just fun. 
You can see here, after my first teammate died, I looked towards my second teammate because I knew my best chance was to go and help him. He had a good nade there. I was going to reload my weapon, but then I saw on my radar that somebody was pushing behind me, so I decided to rotate around and get this uh, res on my teammate. After that, my uh, super was up, so I flew in and used that to just finish off the match really quick because if I had my super in round 4-2 and they had no supers left, and that's one guy pushing, I knew he was going to go for reses, then why not just go ahead and pop my super so I could just get it over with. <laughs> So again, shout out to G Draco there, GG's to him, very fun match, appreciate the help and that my dudes. You can see we're flying into our few last clips here, and honestly, I had a very bad time on Friday. The people that were online, so many cheaters, and if you want to see me rant about that, like I said, you can go watch my video from yesterday, my Blink Hunter build video, because I was just going off, uh, and for the most part, people in the comments we're all, you know, understanding. They're like, yeah, no, it's really bad right now. And I was like, yeah, you know, I expected everyone would for the most part agree because we're all dealing with the same BS. Some people, you know, you get those cool guys sometimes where they're like, yeah, actually, I'm in the top 0.1% of players. And if you think there's actually that many hackers, then you are just wrong. And I'm like, bro, get some fucking braces. Your buck teeth are so far in the way I can barely hear you through your fucking lisp. You are pathetic right now. The amount of d sucking that goes on from these kids to just act like they're better than everyone sometimes is is hilarious you know sometimes there's cheaters in this game there's cheaters in this game a lot most of the time they're just disgusting little meta abusers like these guys i had two teammates this one's running antius the other one had like dune marchers or something abusing their smgs and all this stuff and then they put a shield down and sat in a circle to want to win the match Seriously, that's not how I wanted to get my flawless, but whatever. For the record, I carried them on almost every single other round. I had to get two kills most rounds just to win that match, even with the crutching of titans like I had. And that's the thing that just annoys everyone. But if you somehow play like that and you're just like, I'm the best in the world. Cool, brother. I, I You clearly don't have 20-20 vision if you can't see how stupid you look. But uh, hey, Appreciate you. Keep it up, champ. <laughs> you can see here, I'm going to show you what kind of loot that I got out of my flawless chest. It is just the glaive. I'm not a glaive boy. I might try glaives out some more in the future, maybe next season. We'll see about that, but it's just never a playstyle that I have been super interested in. But either way, always fun to get a new adept, so you can check out the role on that. I'm not too well versed in glaives, so I don't even know if this is a good role. Probably not. Thresh and Rampage or Volt Shot seem like decent. Like it'd probably just be it cool clay maybe you could do something fun with it especially in pve maybe it'd be fun i don't really know you tell me if you think it's a good role or not but that is it for me today as always i really do appreciate you guys watching uh, like i said in screen go ahead check out the full blink journey playlist if you want to see how to become a blink master yourself go to my blink builds playlist if you want to see old blink builds that i have because i have a ton of them out i have hundreds of videos to help you be the very best player you can and as always have a great day guardians